there guys happy uh, lesson seven uh, I'm so proud of you guys as you know for the work that you <clears throat> did today and we are dealing with some pretty complicated uh, objectives and targets in math right now and you guys are rising to the challenge and I'm so excited for you um, I'm eating trying to multitask and eat my salad roll making this video. We'll see how that works out. Um, but as you guys know in lesson seven, it's a really uh, just an extension of lesson six. That extension piece is um, uh, the fact that the numbers will become more and more complicated. So we're going to continue working with the area model um, and we're going to continue connecting the area model with the standard algorithm. We're going to take it slow. We're going to do our best work and try to be uh, really neat and precise. And uh, let's let's go for it. Maybe maybe I'll pro I'll probably just do one problem here because as you guys know, the problems today take about ten minutes. And now that the problems are getting longer, more complicated, uh, it'll probably take about fifteen minutes <coughs> start to finish. So you will not have an option as to which problem you do today. There's only one problem. So here we go. Okay, mathletes, here we go. Uh, we are going to look at this problem. We are on L7. Today is 10, 24, 18. And you thought I was kidding with the complexity of these problems increasing. increasing. No, I was not kidding. Let's go ahead and solve by drawing the area model and using the standard algorithm. We're going to decompose 8,401 into our columns, and then we're going to decompo decompose 305 into rows. So 8,401 <clears throat> is going to decompose into 8,000 plus 400. We have eight in our thousands, four in our hundreds. What do we have in our tens? Nothing, we have a zero. So we're not even going to need to include the zero because we know anything times zero is zero and we have far important things to worry about. Plus one, so because we have one in our ones place value. We're going to decompose 305 into 300 plus, what do we have in our tens? We have zero, so we're not even, we're just gonna skip over the zero because zero represents nothing. 300 plus five, okay? So let's go ahead and label, we'll mark our columns. We're going to have three columns because we decompose 8,401 into one, two, three numbers. And then 305 is decomposed into 305, 300, and five. So we have one, two rows. Let's label uh, our three rows. Our first row is, I'm sorry, our three columns. Our first column is labeled with an 8,000. Our second column is labeled with a 400, and our third column is labeled with a 1. Make sure our largest place value is to the left with our columns. With our rows, please make sure that our largest place value drops to the bottom, or the smaller place values float to the top. So we have 300 plus 5. Um, I actually have to go pick you guys up for lunch, so I'm going to pause here and continue uh, after school. <coughs> Where were we? We were area modeling. That's right. Okay, cool. So here's the thing, you guys. As we get better and better at these area models, you have the option to write the expressions such as 5 times 8,000. You can write the expressions inside the box, or if you're feeling ready, you can go ahead and just write the products in the box. So the expression here is going to be five times 400, which is, well, I know five times four is 20, and then we're bringing two zeros to the party. So think about if you need to continue writing the expressions with the answer later, 
Or if you're ready for an extra challenge, you may just write the product inside the box. Either way, you will have to end up with a product, a partial product within each box. I'm going to go ahead and spread my wings and challenge myself to write the product within each box. But please know if you still feel like you need to write the expressions in the box and then answer the products um, in the second step, that's totally, totally great. Okay, so the third expression here is going to be 5 times 1. Well, I know 5 times 1 is 5. Great. Uh, that now we're going to go into the second row where we multiply each column by 300. First expression is 300 times 8,000. Holy moly. Well, I know 3 times 8 is 24. And I'm bringing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros along to the party. So we have 24 with 5 zeros. Holy moly. That's a really big number. The second expression is going to be 300 times 400. Well, I know 3 times 4 is 12, and then I'm bringing along 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros to the party. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros to the party. Final box, we are looking at 300 times 1. Woohoo! I can do that. 300. Great job. I still, oh, actually, we still have to go back and uh, solve this one. Uh, 5 times 8,000. Well, I know 5 times 8 is 40. And then we're going to bring along 1, 2, 3 zeros to the party. So keep in mind, guys, either way, if you were just writing expressions, that's fabulous, and then answering them later. Or if you are wanting to just write the answer like I did for 5 out of the 6 boxes, that's cool, too. Um, okay, so now what I really would like to encourage you guys to do is to circle your partial products um, if you are writing the expression. We don't have to circle the partial products if the only thing inside the box is a partial product. But if you're writing the expressions and then solving later, please circle the partial products. Okay, so now what we need to do, you guys, is we need to add up our rows. Keep in mind... A row is this, these three numbers. So that is the first row. And then our second row is comprised of these three numbers. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and line up these three numbers vertically because I want to make sure that I am very precise in my addition. So we have 40,000 plus 2,000 plus 5. We're adding those numbers up together. The addition itself, you guys, should be very straightforward. The tricky part about the addition as these numbers are growing is keeping all of the place values in line. So we have 0 plus 5 is 5. Bunch of zeros added together, 0, 0 again, 0 plus 2 is 2, 4 plus nothing is 4. Okay. So our first row partial product is, surprise, surprise, I'm running out of room. I'm going to write this at an angle, 42,005. Okay. Second partial product in the green box in the second row, we are going to add up 2,400 thousand. That's that first partial product right here. And then we're going to look at, I forgot my comma, then we're going to look at 120,000. And then we're going to add 300. At this point, you guys, please, please, please add everything up vertically because adding this up horizontally is very difficult if you need to keep your place values in uh, order, which you absolutely do. <laughs> um, and then, as you guys can see, the addition itself is very simple. We've got zeros, we've got zeros, we've got zero plus three is three, more zeros, zero plus two is two. See, this is not anything fancy. It's just keeping everything lined up. So our... Uh, second row partial product is 2,520,300. Wow, 
1200. That's our second row of partial products. Now, friends, we are going to take it to the traditional algorithm or standard algorithm. Our hope for this is that our partial products match with our area model. And again, we're just going to take it very slowly. And I am going to erase this because I need to make sure that we are staying organized. Okay, so first we're going to start over here with five. We're going to multiply five into one, into zero, into four, and then into eight. Ready? Okay, five times one is five. Five times zero is zero. See how I'm keeping everything lined up? Five times four is 20. But I can't write 20, I have to write zero and carry my two. I can only put one digit per space, so I can't write 20. We're actually going to have to start. Uh, this is what I was talking to a few kids um, about this today. The tricky part about all this carrying, you guys, is that we're not writing numbers like this. We're actually writing numbers like this. So we're going to put our... Um, place value for this to the right here. Is that is that sounding okay? Just keep in mind, we can only put one digit per space, and then you're going to have to carry the other digit over. I can't cram a 20 underneath four and three. All I can fit, my answer here is 20, because five times four is 20. I can't fit a 20 there. All I'm going to be able to fit there is a zero, and then I'm going to carry my two over. Let's look at 5 times 8. 5 times 8 is 40, and now here's the beauty. We've hit the end of the road. At the end of the road, I can put as many digits in my space as I need to because I'm at the end of the road. Here, here, and here, I can only put one digit below 4, one digit below 0, and one digit below 1. But here, 8, look at all the room we have. We can put all the digits that we need Matthew to. Matthew Tran, please come <laughs> to the office. Matthew Tran. Beautiful. Okay, Please so come to the 5 times 8 is 40, plus 2 is 42. Oops. There we go. Awesome. Okay, second row. This is, this is funny because I'm multiplying 0 times all of these. Okay, so 0 times 1 is 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm not even going to spend time writing a whole roll of zeros because like here, like um, our tens place value and like our tens place value, they were zeros. We didn't make a column. We didn't make a column for zeros because everything that we multiply by zero is a zero and that's just a waste of our time. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip this because it's zero. Um, I'm also going to cross 5 out because we've multiplied 5 through everything. And I'm going to cross 2 out because we've used that too. Now we're going to go to our next line and we're going to multiply 3 into 1, 3 into 0, 3 into 4, and 3 into 8. But this is not a 3, you guys. It's not a 30. It's a 300. So please remember where we are in place value land. This 3 is actually a 300. So think about what happens when you multiply 300 by 1. Well, when I multiply 300 by 1, I get 300. 300 by 1. Now we have established our place value. Now we can continue multiplying 3 into 0, 4, and 8. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 4 is 12. Remember, I can't put my whole 12 there. All I can put is a 2, and then I'm going to carry my 1 over. 3, now we're at the end of the road again. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Oh, we forgot to check in. How exciting the fact that this partial product is the same as this. Yahoo! What about these friends? Oh my gosh, such a relief. Two of the same numbers. That means we are on the right track. What we need to do is our final piece. And I am going to change colors because I'm just so excited. We're just going to add. We know how to add. We're great at addition. Five plus zero, five. Zero plus zero, zero. Zero plus three, three. Two plus zero, two. Four plus two, Violet, thank you. Six. 
And then Ashita, I need your help for five plus nothing. Five. And then Jackson, two plus nothing. Thanks, buddy. So our final product, you guys, is 2,562,000. Three hundred five. Whoa, that was a lot of work. That took a lot of time, a lot of patience. I chose to use a lot of color. Please make sure that you're doing these problems slowly, slowly. Uh, taking our time and doing these problems slowly allows us to do our best work and to really think about each step of the problem. Okay, so keep up the great work, you guys, and I will see you tomorrow.